There's a river of miracles flowing. There's a river of miracles flowing. There is a river of miracles that are flowing. Hallelujah. There is a river of miracles flowing. Come on, say there's a river, there's a river of miracles. I'm stepping in the river. 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 A spirit is flowing. next to you and say, I'm stepping in today. I'm in it. I'm in. I'm in my river of miracles. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm in the river of miracles. Hallelujah. Come on. I dare you to just look somebody in their eye and say, I expect, I expect, I expect, I expect, I expect my miracle. I expect, I expect, I expect, I expect, I expect my miracle. I expect my miracle. I expect my miracle. I expect my miracle. I expect, I expect, I expect my miracle. I expect my miracle. Come on, I want you to prophesy to yourself and say, I expect my miracle. I expect my miracle. Come on, open up your mouth and tell. Come on, open up your mouth and tell God, 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 I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to just tell somebody as I get ready to go into the word, I know God's doing it now. It's not something that's going to happen. I know it's it's happening right now while I'm standing, while I'm sitting, while I'm in the room. Hallelujah. Because I'm under an open heaven. Oh, hallelujah. I'm under an open heaven. Hallelujah. So it has to happen. Come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for this time, this divine time. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Amen. And I'm thankful to be with you again today. I I never take it lightly. Doesn't matter how long you know people, that to be trusted is an honor. Amen. And so I'm I'm honored to be here today in the absence of your pastors there celebrating. And I want to celebrate them. Amen. So let's let's open our mouths and clap our hands. And give God praise for Apostle Sam and Prophetess Marsha. Because they're awesome. They're awesome leaders. Come on, hallelujah. 
They're awesome leaders. And go ahead and celebrate them. They've been married for 33 years. That's that's not easy. Come on. And they're good examples. We give God praise for their lives. We thank God for their lives and for their dedication and for their continuing and for their consistency. Sylvia, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you. And uh, all the visitors, we thank God for you today. We're going to go to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. And I'm going to read about four, four verses from Ezekiel 37, but then I'm going to go back. Ezekiel 37, I'm going to emphasize those in verses 4, 5, verse 13, 14, and then I'm going to go confirm with this one. Ezekiel 37, verse 4, and again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will make breath or spirit enter thee you that you may come to life. Uh, verse 13 and 14, it says, Then you will know with confidence, this is the Amplified, that I am the Lord. When I have opened up your graves and made you come out of your graves, my people, I will put my spirit in you and you will come to life. And I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and fulfilled it, says the Lord. I just want to read because it ties together. I want to read Genesis 1 and 2 from the Amplified, and it says, In the beginning, God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void, or a waste and emptiness, and darkness was upon the face of the ocean that covered the unformed earth. The Spirit of God. Tell somebody the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding, over the face of the waters. I want you to just talk to somebody around you in your row, whoever you want to talk to, and tell them it's time to get your second wind. It's time to get your second wind. Come on, talk to somebody else and say, you will live again. You will live again. In, in Genesis, uh, God, I, I'm tying these two together for a reason, but in Genesis, God willed these creative events. He's the creator of the heaven, heavens and the earth. Amen? He's the creator of the universe. That's who we pray to. Come on, I want you to just think about it for a minute. We, we, we have communion with the creator of the heavens and the earth the creator of the entire universe. Amen? And it says, uh, uh, in Genesis, when he created the heavens and the earth, he, God essentially willed these creative events into existence. And the beginning of Genesis translates, it is my will that this is happening. When let is used in this way, because it says, uh, it, it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light in, in Genesis 1 and 2. Amen? And so when the word let is used in this particular way, it represents a command or expression of God's will. So literally, God commanded the world to come into existence. Amen? And I'm using Genesis chapter 1, and there are there are other um there are other passages that I could have tied in, but I wanted just to just tie these two together, Ezekiel 37 and Genesis 1, amen? Because in these two particular passages, breath and spirit is used. The word breath, the word spirit, his spirit hovered over. Come on, amen? Uh, and, 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 and these two are correlated and they're put together, and they essentially mean the same thing. They're talking about the Ruah of God. 
or the breath, the spirit, the breath of God. Amen. The Ruah of God. Ruah is the Hebrew word used in scripture for the breath of God. It is the wind, the spirit, and the life of God. Amen. I know you're in a you're in a teaching church, so you probably already know what I'm talking about. Amen. But I'm I'm just reiterating it because I want you to understand the magnitude of what God is capable of doing. Amen. Tell somebody I'm going to get my second win today. Hallelujah. And so Ruah, the the spirit, life, the wind, it's not so much a physical force, but it's an essence, God's essence that creates and sustains life. And it's translated as the spirit of God, as in Genesis chapter one, the breath, God's power, his breath that animated all creation. I just wanted to lay a foundation. Amen. And so we go to Ezekiel 37, and we know we, w- with Ezekiel 37, we're talking about the valley of dry bones. And I'm, I'm using this allegorically. I'm, I'm applying it and analogizing to your life. And, and I know not everybody finds themselves in a valley of dry bones, but a lot of people go through situations where they feel that they, they are trapped in an area that there seems to be no life in. Am I preaching to somebody in the room today? Amen. Where it seems like I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. Only by the hand of God. Oh, hallelujah. And, and we're living in times, we're living in, uh, we're living in uh, moments of history where, where many things are taking place. I'm not going to go down the list, but there are more diabolical things in this hour that we're seeing not just in this nation but around the globe come on somebody there is a spirit that is trying to uh, permeate the atmosphere it's already infiltrated it come on can i preach to somebody in the church and we have to uh we have to be in a position as believers where we are present and alert come on look at somebody and say i have to i have to be present to be alert. I can't, I can't afford to take a break in this season. I can't afford to take a break even for the rest of my life because the enemy's always going to be busy. Come on, somebody. He's just doing his job. But we as believers, Minister Sean, that, that's his job to, to create chaos. He's just doing what he, he was created to do. That he chose to do. Say that. He's he's doing what he chose to do. And so he 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 walks around as a, a, a prowling lion. I'm I'm paraphrasing this to seeking who he can devour. And so we have to be responsible and accountable to where God wants us positioned in this season of our lives. Come on. I, I know this doesn't make people feel good because you actually have to start being accountable. You have to want to get it back up on your feet and really walk the way that God's wanting you to walk and talk and be and move. Hallelujah. You you have to want to be a glory carrier. You have to want that position. It's easy to say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand up and make a difference. It's easy to sit on the sidelines, Prophet Sylvia. But if you want more of God, come on, hallelujah. Tell somebody, I have to want to live. And so we go to Ezekiel 37, and it shows us that God is using his restorative creativity, and not just for maintenance. He's not just doing a a restorative or restorative maintenance on this situation. He's bringing it back to life permanently. Hallelujah. He's bringing it back to life permanently. Let me go to Ezekiel 37. And it's, it says that the, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Ezekiel, he has a vision. He was brought into the valley. He was set down in the valley of dry bones. And there, 
there were bones all around him. And it says there, it was an open valley. Everything had been dried up. Amen. And the Lord came to him and he said, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel answered, oh, Lord God, you know. And again, he said to me, prophesy to them and say, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says to these bones, behold, I will make breath enter you so you can come to life. But in that, in that instance, in that instance, in the vision that Ezekiel's having and the Lord is speaking to him, uh, he says, son of man, can these bones live? And, uh, essentially, the Lord is asking Ezekiel a rhetorical question. He already knows the answer to it, Prophet Jason. He already knows that he is able to bring the bones back to life. Come on, hallelujah. He already knows that he's powerful enough to bring them back up out of their graves. But he wants to hear Ezekiel's answer. Come on. <laughs> If you, only you know, God, if you allow it, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing this. If you allow it to happen, I'll be your instrument that you use to speak and decree a thing. Come on, hallelujah. And so, so many of us are in situations where, where we have, where we have just uh, resolved ourselves to be, uh, be in the position that we're in. <laughs> I, I'm just, this is just how it's going to be. I'm just going to have to live this way. There's. I'm, I'm so tired, I can barely get up. I, I don't know about you, but I've been in seasons like that. A am I preaching to somebody in the room? You don't have to even wave your hand. You, don't you can just look straight ahead. I don't, I don't know. Because sometimes people don't like to admit that because they want to be the super spiritual, over, overly, shati roshandio satababa rokosa Christian. How are you doing today? I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Glory to God. And they're super over spiritual. And they're dying on the inside. But they've learned how to perform. Hallelujah. And God is saying, I need you to pull back the performance that you know how to do because you're religious. And get into my presence and come into relationship. And understand my power again. When you're in relationship with me. And you understand that, that my presence can, can cause you to come into a place of peace. So you will once again remember the power that I have. My preaching to somebody. And so Ezekiel, uh, he says, son of man, can these bones live? Oh, Lord God, you know. So Ezekiel. He answers the Lord, and, and the Lord says, prophesy to these bones and say to them, uh, hear the word of the Lord. And so Ezekiel prophesies, behold, I will make breath enter you. And, and he, he's using the words that the Lord is giving to him. Amen? And, and so breath enter you that you may come to life. I will put skin, I'll put flesh on you. I'll cover you with skin. I'll put breath in you that you may come alive and that you will know that I am the Lord. Sometimes we go through situations because we've tried to, we've tried to manage it in our own strength. And we've tried to, we've tried to, uh, we've tried to get the right connections and we've tried to connect with the right people on Instagram. And we've tried to uh, reach out to this person and that person. We've tried to, to, get a prayer partner that has no power come on somebody we didn't believe what the prophet of the house told us so we had to go find another prophet on facebook oh hallelujah that prophesied uh, that prophesied with a spirit of divination over you and now you have to get healed again can i preach to somebody in here hallelujah and so sometimes God will allow us to go through situations and seasons, even myself. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter. Oh, but your prophet is Kelly Cruz. But I, I go through things. Come on. Can I keep it real? <laughs> I, I have to continually seek his face. I have to stay in his presence. Amen. I, I, I can't just take for granted that I'm, I'm able to 
to preach and to prophesy and to travel. I have to literally every single day stay in his face. Come on, hallelujah. Because I have to know that it is him that I move with. Come on, and that I, that I live in and have my being. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, talk to somebody in your row and say, God's trying to get your attention. He wants you to know that it's him that is bringing you back to your feet and back to life. And to a place of living and moving in the fullness of his purpose for you. Hallelujah. And it says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a thundering noise. And behold, a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. And I looked and there was flesh on the bone, and, but there was no breath in them. And so God began to allow Ezekiel to see this, the vision. He allowed, he allowed him to see what he was envisioning literally come together and, and, and begin to form. Amen? Begin to form. But, but Ezekiel had to make the investment of his time and of his, his, his power to speak a thing. Come on, hallelujah. He had to stop what he was doing and trust in God and invest his moment and make sure that he was believing enough to see what God was saying come to, come to pass and manifest. When we're talking about manifestation, it's the, the clear, distinct evidence of God. Amen. It's clear evidence in your face. Amen. Come on, tell somebody manifestation. And I'm not talking about the, 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 the manifestation that you see with the numbers and the witchcraft. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the supernatural power of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Manifestation coming, coming together. I see it coming together, but there's still no breath in the body. Amen. Making an investment. Making an investment. And, and it is so imperative, amen, that we literally stay tapped into a dimension of discernment and awareness and have a supernatural depth perception. We have to keep our, there, there's so much that is going on around the world and media, on social media. You could get caught up for the next two days, if you wanted to, you could be just thrown off. You could you could see so much that that would that would taint your spirit. Amen. There's, I'm not I'm not just talking about uh, the spirit of perversion that that we see on on social media. I'm talking about the media in itself. If you if you start watching the news, you'll want to stay in your house and never come out, and you you'll want to order. 500,000 cases of water. Like, you'll, you'll start doing stuff because the spirit of fear has entered your atmosphere. You will start operating from a, a realm of fear. Amen? I hope somebody's understanding what I'm saying because there's so much that's happening. And because when we are in a space where we don't know, I, I don't know what could possibly happen. And it's good to prepare, but it's not okay to walk in fear. And so we have to constantly be alert. We have to have a, a, a discernment. We have to have a, a supernatural depth perception. We have to keep our, our eyes on the prize. Amen. I, I was As I was preparing this, I was thinking, and I heard somebody say this the other day, and it made me think about it again. But when you see a horse on uh, the racetrack, or a horse that is a, a racing horse, or maybe even uh, a horse that, that does um, horse shows, or, or even the, there's horses in the Olympics, uh, but they have blinders on them. And so the horse's peripheral vision is, is protected, so it can't see to the left and to the right. It can only see in front of it, so it can focus on the it can focus on the outcome. Come on, hallelujah. And so we're in a season right now where we have to constantly ask God, God, renew my mind so I'm not distracted by the things of this world. Hallelujah. Let me let me remember the prophetic word that you gave to me. 
Let me know that it's still coming to pass no matter what it looks like. Hallelujah. No, no matter what's going on. Come on, just talk to somebody in your row and say, no matter what's going on. The word that has been spoken over your life is still coming to pass. And so we have to know what God wants for us. And we have to, we have to know that it's not just for the season, but it's for going forward. Amen. So as, as Ezekiel, as he was speaking, as he was releasing the words, he had to be in a position where he was invested in the moment. Amen. Uh, a few months ago, I was traveling. I always have these stories when I preach, and I use them. But I was traveling a few months back, and I was flying out of Pittsburgh. And for some reason, all of a sudden in Pittsburgh, the lines are so crazy. They're like <laughs> way, I, I don't even know how to tell you. Like, but They're so long that people have been missing their flights, even if they've been there like three, four hours early. <laughs> because they're not they're not equipped for the overload. And so when I got to the airport, I knew that I, when I saw the line, I said, oh, <laughs> I'm going to miss my flight. And I wasn't there late, but I knew I would miss my flight because the line was so crazy. And so clear, the company clear was off the side by the, uh, by the, the security. And I remembered years ago that I had clear, but I never really used it, but I travel a lot now. So I said, let me just go over and ask a question. And so when they looked me up, Pastor Reggie, they, they found my name in the system. But my subscription had expired. And so it wasn't going to do me any good unless I made an investment. So the guy said to me, uh, Miss Cruz, that today you can, we can go ahead and get you cleared. And we can take you right up through security right now, but the investment is $183. And so I looked around and I said, you know what, it's worth it because I'm going to either miss my flight and I travel a lot, so I might as well go ahead and pay the 183 And as soon as, literally, as soon as my card went through, he said, come with me. And he escorted me right up to the front. And the guy, the guy looked at my, looked at my uh, ID and he said, oh, we don't need to do anything else. Just let her go through. I didn't have to wait not one second. Prophet Sylvia, I was able to just walk right up and walk right through because I had made an investment and I had special clearance. Come on. Hallelujah. And you're in a season right now where God is looking for some people who will make your investment of your time. Come on. You're in your investment of seeking him more come this is not this is not just a a, a, a just a, a one time or, or a get get rich quick type scheme that you're going to play with god god is looking for more of you he's looking for all of you amen in order for you to see things come back together stand on their feet begin to breathe again come to life god is looking for you to be all in come on tell somebody i have to be all in and it's easier for people to it's easier for people to stay in a place of dysfunction because you don't want to ruffle some feathers or it's easier to stay in a place of of dysfunction because it's what you're familiar with when you're familiar with something for so so long when you're when you're familiar with a valley of dry bones I, i'm 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 going to compare it to our lives now when you're when you are familiar with a place that has been dry for so long has been a place of devastation amen a place of hurt a place of pain a place of poverty and it can, it, it's not just about financial poverty. It's about mental, emotional, spiritual, come on, social poverty. When you're, when you're in that place for so long, it's hard to make a change because it's going to take your effort. You have to want to see something come back to life. It's easy. I don't know if I've, I, I've said this before here. It's easy to downgrade something, but it costs you to upgrade. It costs you, 
if you want something more in life. Can I, can I preach to somebody? And it's going to cost you your, your time. It's going to cost you your discipline. It's going to cost you your accountability. It's going to cost you your, you, you being truly, truly sold out for Christ. Amen? God is looking for some revivalists in this hour. And I'm not, ta- oh, I'm not talking about going to another country. I'm talking about right here in Columbia, Maryland. Come on, he's looking for some people who are on fire enough to not just change a, a globe, but they're, they're able to change their municipality. Come on, and, and then because their municipality is on fire, the nation starts catching on fire. And God is looking for some people right now with pure hearts. Who believe that no matter what it looks like, no matter what has happened in the atmosphere, no matter what demonic agents have been sent. Come on, I wish I could preach to a church in here. No no matter what demonic territorial spirits have been released. Oh, hallelujah. No matter, no matter, no matter. No matter, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter how many, how many plots and plans of the enemy, hallelujah. No matter the the diabolical delusional spirit that has been released in the area. God is looking for some people who will have the power to stand up and say, I'm not fearful of that. Hallelujah. And so we have to be ready. Tell somebody I have to be ready. I'm almost finished. Give me about 10 minutes. I'm almost finished. The breath has not entered the body yet. You have to be willing to unlearn what has been familiar to you. Well, it, it's too hard for me to unlearn something. I just, this is what I'm used to, and this is what I'm about to deal with for the rest of my life. But God is saying, will you take a minute and unlearn and relearn? Will you, will you take a minute and unlearn and relearn so your bloodline doesn't have to go through anything else? So the curses could actually be broken. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You, you have to, to be willing to understand that when something has become outdated in your life, God wants to do something new. You cannot have a, an iPhone 5 in 2024. It does not work. It doesn't work anymore. It's outdated. My father is 73, and he, up until two years ago, had a flip phone because he does not know how to, he does not know anything technological at all. Not a thing. And we had to upgrade him because that particular phone would not receive service because it was going to be outdated. And so we had to upgrade him to a smartphone. And I I will text him, Dad, I love you, hello, and I'll get some random letter because he doesn't want to learn how to. I love my dad. I'm not making fun of him. But he doesn't want to learn how to move. I keep trying to show him, Dad, all you have to do, it's just one, two, three, I love you. It's very easy. But he's not willing to invest. Amen? I, I know it's a funny story. But God is trying to get you to a place of accelerated restoration. Tell somebody, my, my restoration is going to be accelerated. There's going to be no restrictions. I'm going to be able to begin to legislate in the spirit realm. Come on, hallelujah. I'm, I'm not just going to be speaking it here in the natural, but God is going to give me legislative power in the spirit realm. Come on, you have to know the power that you operate in. And I wish I had somebody in here today that would just say, I'm getting my second wind back. 
Hallelujah. As he prophesied, amen, there was a, a thundering noise, amen, and it, it, it says that, that uh, he says, prophesy to the breath, son of man. The, the bones came together, the skin, the flesh grew on the bones, but there was no breath. Prophesy to the breath, son of man, and say to the breath, come from the four winds, O breath, that these may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet. Hallelujah. Some of you literally just have to believe that you're able to really live again. Come on, hallelujah. I'm not preaching something that I have not lived through. I'm telling you, Prophetess Sylvia knows some of the things that I've been through. Amen. I know you guys have known me for a long time, but some of you don't know the up close and personal Pastor Marsha and Apostle Sam do, but you don't know the ins and outs behind the scenes. Come on, somebody. That I've had to literally uh, uh, crawl and scrape to get back up on my feet from. But I want to live. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I know that God has so much more for me. I wish I had a church. <laughs> and I know that he didn't, want just, he, he didn't want me to just come back to be able to stand up on my feet. But he wants me to thrive. There's a promise over my life. And there's a promise over your life. And God is expecting you to come back and, and, and understand that, that as you're able to stand and breathe again, it's time to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. God is putting you in a place where you will be able to stand You'll be able to break forth. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear. I'm your God. I'm giving you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. And I'll keep a firm grip on you. Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah 41, 13. And he says, I, I'm right here to help you. So God is literally giving you reassurance. Tell somebody, today is my day of reassurance. Today is my day of reassurance. Lord, don't let my ego affect my breakthrough. Come on, I want you to say it out loud. Lord, don't let my ego affect my breakthrough. Hallelujah. In this passage, ten times, God promises to do something about the dry bones, even to the point where he's repeating himself. I'll cause breath to enter you. I'll lay skin on you, flesh. I'll cause flesh to come upon you. I'll cover you with flesh. I'll put breath in you. I'm going to open up your graves. I'm going to bring you up from your graves. I'll bring you back to your land. I'll settle you in your own land. I'll place you on your own soil. I'll put my spirit within you. The, the Ruah of God. Come on, hallelujah. The breath, the spirit of God. And he's promising this. He's promising to bring you back to a place uh, of bringing you home to settle you to your own soil, your own land. Come on, hallelujah. Some of you have been in a season of displacement. I'm not talking about an apartment or a house. I'm talking about uh, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. You have not been settled. But God is about to settle some things for some people in this room today and you're about to live again he's giving you reassurance and and in this passage god says three times and you shall live and you shall live and you shall live and his breath and spirit the ruah of god is referenced three times in this passage i want to as i'm finishing i want to I want to begin to prophesy. I want to, I want to speak these declarations out loud. And I want to prophesy them over you. But I want you to believe in your heart today that God is giving you your second wind. You're, 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 you are in a place where, where you believe that even if you've been in a valley of dry bones or a situation 
that has been challenging or you may you may be in a comfortable situation but you're just not all you're not in the place that God fully wants you to be in and so that starts being uncomfortable because you're not fulfilling the promise of God hallelujah and so things can essentially begin to dry up because God is expecting you to step into the fullness of what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. Do you believe that, that this situation can come back to life? Hallelujah. As I, I was, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to make these declarations. I was traveling once again. I always have these, <laughs> these like crazy travel stories, but I was flying into Atlanta about six weeks ago and as we were flying in there was a lot of turbulence like it was really crazy <laughs> I mean it was like super super bad and people were like ah, you know they were like <laughs> it was really crazy and so we we were the whole the whole flight was turbulent and so um I I'd go to sleep I'm like okay I'm just gonna Lord, if I'm supposed to make it, I'm making it. So let me just close my eyes and go to sleep. Praise the Lord. But as we were getting ready to land, it, it, the the pilot, instead of, you know how we're, we're, you're landing, if you've ever flown, you're landing. Normally the, the, the plane starts to begin to slow down a little bit so the pilot can land probably on the, the um, tarmac. And... And so as we were landing, Pastor Dolores, the, the pilot started to speed up. And after we landed, he said, I had to just break through that last bit of turbulence. And I said, you know what? That's a prophetic word. Uh, he said, I, I had to break through the, the last bit of turbulence. And, and uh, it was just so, like the wording he used and the way he said it was so prophetic to me. I don't know about anybody else on the plane. Oh, Prophet Cruz, you're too deep. No, it prophesied to me. Because there are some things that I've been through, and I, sometimes we want to move too slow, and God is trying to get you out faster. If you would just believe that you're able to breathe again, if you would believe that you're able to come back together and stand up on your feet. Come on, hallelujah. If you believe that God is powerful enough to put breath back in your body. Come on, if you believe that God is powerful enough to begin to put flesh back on the dead thing. Come on, if you believe that God is powerful enough to bring you back to life and give you your second wind. He's trying to get you to that place. Where you will be burst through into breakthrough. Come on, tell somebody, I'm bursting through. I'm bursting through into my breakthrough. I'm going to prophesy these. And, and maybe if you could play softly for me, I'm going to prophesy these to you. And, and then I'm going to begin to minister to some people. I want you to just talk to a, a couple, few people around you and say, Today, I'm getting my second wind. I'm going to live again. No matter what has happened, no matter what's going on, no matter what has transpired, I will see the manifested promise of God. It has not been denied. Some of you have uh, had a word that has been released 15 to 20 years ago. I have. I'm older. I've had a word that was released 20 years ago that I'm still believing God for, but I know because he said it, it's coming to pass. Come on, God does not lie. Hallelujah. Come on, I, I want you to just find somebody and say, I know, I know, I know, I know the word is coming to pass. I want to release these declarations and I want you to receive them. For yourself. If you receive it, I want you to say, I receive it. The first one is, you will not be in a deficit. Surplus is your portion. You are not behind schedule. Acceleration is your portion. You are not overlooked. Selective options and opportunities are your portion. 
You are not undervalued. You are favored and connected to people who know your worth. You are not locked out. You're only in rooms God has assigned to you. You are not behind schedule. God's about to accelerate time. You are not dead. You're living and you're breathing. You're not just breathing and living, but you're thriving. Come on, I want you to open up your mouth and begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you shall live and you shall live. 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 live. The Ruah of God, the, the, the spirit and the breath, the power of God is moving on your behalf. And you shall live and you shall live and you shall live and you shall live. Come on, if you are in here today and you say, God, I know. <laughs> I know what you promised me. I, you know, God will do things and I, I'll just, I'm going to do a high level overview of this. That means I'm not going to tell you all the details. God will do things just so you know that he's God. And that you know that he's speaking. I had a, a situation uh, this past week. I got a, a, a message from a lady and she said, God's going to speak to you through a dream or a vision. I'm not sure how, but God has you. And on Friday... And I, I said, thank you, because there are some things that I'm really praying about right now, and I'm trusting God. I'm, I'm getting, I have my hand on some things that I'm getting ready to do, and I'm, I'm just like, Lord, let me do it in your timing. And, and, and so, yeah, uh, Friday, Friday, I got a call in the morning from a lady who is a very on-point prophet, and she said, God, it was last night I had a dream about you. And she began to tell me the dream. And literally what she was describing was the book launch I'm about to do with all of the items that are in the book launch. So the colors. I have not told anybody about this except my daughter. Like I just even just mentioned it to you briefly in the hall. And I said, God, thank you. Because I was, sometimes you get to the place, can I just be honest where where your foot almost slips. Not into sin, but where you feel like, God, are you really hearing me? Am I preaching to somebody in here? Am I making sense? Where it's like, God, you, you, see, you see people that are wicked prospering. Lord, when is it going to happen to me? And so God's reassurance just came over me. And I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. I see you. Yesterday, I had a situation. I'll just say that. And I just felt led to ask a question. And as soon as I asked the question, the person said, the person said, well, that, that's, that's God because this and this and this. And they were telling me about what they were looking for. I, I knew somebody literally immediately in that area. And literally within like, three hours that, that I had made the phone call and made the connection. I don't know what the outcome's going to be. But it pays to be obedient to God. Come on. And when those situations happen, it lets you know that God, I literally hear you clearer than I think I hear you. But Prophetess Cruz, you're a prophet. I know. I know I am. But sometimes we just need to know that God is literally right here in the moment with us. Like he's in, in the car with us. <laughs> like he's sitting on the couch with me when I'm praying. Like he's in the room with me. Come on, hallelujah. Like he, he's right beside me when I'm traveling. Come on, somebody. Like he hears my conversation and sends somebody to answer it. Come on, hallelujah. That, that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And so I believe that today as you're in here, and I want to minister to some people, I'm going to call you out. But I, I want to, we're going to do it quickly. We won't be here long, long. But I want to minister to you. If you're in here today and you say, Prophetess Cruz, I believe that 
today is my day to get my second wind. Even if I just touch you, I want to make contact with you. Even if it's not a full-blown prophetic word. Some of you have had a million prophetic words. You just need to know that God is for you and with you. And I reassure you today, He is. Come on, hug somebody next to you and say, He's with you and He's for you. He's with you and he's for you. He's with you and he's for you. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we're going to take tithes and offering, and she will come back and finish administration. To God be the glory. So we want everyone to give. Amen. We want to be a blessing to this ministry, to this house. Amen. Your giving is a blessing. Amen. And we need your blessing. And as I'm asking you to give, let me get mine. Amen. And here are the ways to give. Amen. They're on your screen and also you'll see them online. Amen. First of your everlasting life, dollar sign, everlasting life, CC. That's for cash app. Dollar sign, everlasting life, CC. Then you also have um, our Zelle, PayPal. Amen. Which is finance at everlasting life. Dot org. Amen. My glasses is uh, telling on me. So, but to God be the glory. Then we also have our Zell, which is finance at everlastinglife.org. The same as PayPal. And our website, if you're giving through the website, everlastinglife.org slash give. Amen. So we want to be a blessing to the house of God. And all everyone that have their tithes and their offering. Amen. Or a seed, a building fund. Come on, we want to be a blessing, amen. I've also heard a, a pastor say that when we work, we are not working to earn a living because our living come from Jehovah Jireh. He's the provider. So our work is that we do is to give. So that's why we work. We work to give, amen, because God gives back to us. So if you have your offering, anyone else need an envelope, raise your hand, the usher will come around. If not, can we all just stand to our feet and we'll get some praise music as we go and bring forth your offering. Are y'all blessed today? And are you truly blessed? Hallelujah. To God be the glory. From the beginning until this time now, God has been in it all. So, I mean, I'm listening to the praise and worship doing a song I haven't heard in years. And I'm, I'm just like in awe, man. Wow. God is really taking us to a different level. Let him have his way. And remember she kept saying, no matter what, you're going to have some trials that's going to come. No matter what, don't forget what was spoken today. Even what was spoken when Pastor Sam spoke about the hope. Come on. The hope. It's there. You have to have the expectancy. Amen. Have that expectancy no matter what happens. It's going to be some trials. It's going to be some struggles, some troubles. you got to persevere. you got to go on. We all have to go forward. Amen. Now, all hearts and minds clear. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Father, for the prophetess, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pour back into her. All that she had poured out to us, Lord. And Father, we ask that you will strengthen her with a renewed strength like the eagle's wing. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will continue. Keep her covered under the blood of Jesus. And all the information she shared, mighty God, we already know you have a bank full of it, Lord. That more is coming. More is coming. More is coming. And we glorify you. We give you praise and honor, Lord. Even as we dismiss from this place, but never out your presence, Lord. We thank you. Father, we bless you, Lord. Now for the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, remain, and abide with us 